Okay, everybody. Uh, I said I would make another video today. I'm kind of stuck out on a job, so since I said I would make it, release it, I'm going to do it in my truck. Uh, got to apologize because I'm, I'm left without a lot of notes and, and material that I wanted to add to this. So I'm kind of just improvising. <clears throat> and I may make another video later with regards to all this same information just so it's more clear and concise so in doing these videos i want to keep them as short as possible so as not to overwhelm anyone and give you a chance to fact check me with current events and especially with the scripture <clears throat> because god is the word and the word is with him john chapter one Jesus points out all through his word that many things will be hidden and sealed up until he appoints his two witnesses. Revelations 11, chapter 3. He also explains about speaking and teaching in parables and its importance in Matthew chapter 13 and especially beginning at verse 13. He's explaining in these things that basically if everything was laid out clear in absolute sequence then Satan and all the false prophets would better know how to manipulate and hide away the proof of God's omnipotence and the Word. He points out in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, to be wise as serpents, because the serpent, Satan, isn't ordinary in any way. you got to understand, he was the first angel created before all other angels, <clears throat> before the earth, and even before mankind. Satan has great power and authority, as it points out in Revelations chapter 13, verse 2. This is also shown in Matthew 4, when Satan tries to tempt Christ. With all that understand, you begin to see, this is why only through Christ and his word can you see through Satan's lies, deceit, and his workings on earth against mankind. Satan is very good at hiding his work, but has one major flaw, his pride, which is exactly what got him cast out of heaven. His pride makes him put his mark on what he does, the mark of the beast. He has many ways to do this, but... I'm going to show you just this one for now because it's importance and for the disbelievers and naysayers because after my last video, some people said we couldn't be at Revelations 18 because all these other things haven't happened yet, including the mark of the beast. And again, I'll refer you back to chapter Matthew chapter 13. Your eyes see without seeing, saith the Lord. And it is hidden away and sealed up until the time he appoints his witnesses. Revelations 11 verse 3. Get ready. This is one of those things that will make the whole world hate me. Just as said in Revelations chapter 11. <clears throat> Where do you hold your cell phone? Of course in your right hand or most people at least. And where do you put it when you talk on it? up to your head, or at least some type of Bluetooth device, even if it's just an earpiece, which is also processed by your frontal lobe located in your forehead. So you end up with your Bluetooth symbol. And this is going to be one of your major marks of the beast. So now let me elaborate. The so-called inventor, instead of putting his name on his supposed creation to use this symbol, he cl claims to represent the initials of the 10th century Danish king Harold Gormson, which would be the initials H and a G. But instead of using the G, he replaced it with a B, 
that was supposedly to represent his nickname, Harold Bluetooth. So he claims. This nickname was never confirmed, by the way. He then goes further to decide to use ancient runes language and letters and symbols. So you end up with the H in ancient ruin, runes. That's your H symbol in ancient ruins. And it actually means serpent. And then you end up with your B, which he says stands for the Bluetooth that was never confirmed. And that's your B. This little area right here, that's your B. But in the ancient ruins, it actually means birch tree and birth. And to go even further, he didn't leave these two symbols separate when they made this, this design for Bluetooth. They actually put the H into the B so it's to represent the serpent in the tree in his birth. <clears throat> and this was done in 1991. So this has been about 40 years ago. This was the mark of the beast, one of the marks of the beast. But we go back to Satan's pride has always been his downfall, and it will be again because he has to put his mark on his works, even if it's in a deceitful manner. They were actually going to name uh, the Bluetooth technology Pan instead of Bluetooth, but I assume decided not to because it's too obvious, because too many people know that Pan is another name for Baphomet and another obvious name for Satan, one of his many names. Remember, he is Legion. And here's what shows you just how spiteful Satan is. The Danish king, whose name the symbol is supposed to represent, but actually doesn't, was the king that established Christianity with the Danish people. And this is just a means of Satan attempting to desecrate something that represents Christ. Like I will show you, he does in many ways and as often as he can. Putting all this into perspective, you can see he's no dummy. But he is prideful and puts his mark on his work to exalt himself. But he doesn't do it in pl uh, plain sight as plain as day. Otherwise, it would be too easy for everyone to see and reject. Just as Jesus hides many things, so Satan and his false prophets, prophets wouldn't see until Jesus was ready to reveal them through his appointed witnesses, <clears throat> it's in your phones that are in your right hand and up to your forehead, the Bluetooth more specifically, and seeing now that everyone is using their phones with the Bluetooth connectivity to buy and sell, just as stated in Revelations chapter 13, verse 17, it's making cash and debit cards with their chips even irrelevant. And soon, you will only be able to buy and sell with your phone and Bluetooth. So for all that that say it can't be the time, that I say it is, I say to you, just because you don't see that these things have happened doesn't mean they haven't already happened. God points out that you're not supposed to see them until he's ready for you to see them. Another way to put it is you don't know what you don't know because it's on unknown to you. <laughs> With all this being revealed, I compel you to look all of this up yourselves. Please fact check me. Look up ancient ruins and their symbols. 
and find these symbols for yourselves. And look up the Bluetooth symbol. Why they named it this. You got to understand that it clearly states in the Bible that almost all people will willingly accept this mark and worship the beast. Now think to yourself, look how much people worship their phones. Look how everybody's got to have the, the newest, latest, and greatest of phones and technology. And every single one of them have Bluetooth. So I'm going to warn everybody, at least keep your Bluetooth turned off. So there's a lot more involved in this. I, I'm, I've tried to keep it really brief and short. I'll, I'll go more in depth at a later point when I put a, put a lot more into a whole perspective. Uh, and again, you know, it's not going to be in plain sight and it's going to have to be something that you worship. Everybody worships the phones and, and they just can't live without them. And this Bluetooth technology that's in is is in our vehicles, our phones. It, it's in every computer. It, they're putting it in even the appliances. So, it, and it discusses this in the Bible. Everybody's going to worship it willingly, worship it, and they're not going to want to let it go. They're going to accept it willingly. And you know, this has made our life, our our. So everybody believes this, this Bluetooth technology has made everything just so wonderful for humanity. So y'all try to, try to wrap your minds around that. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to message me. I, I'll try to answer what I can. And again, I apologize that I couldn't make a better video. I was stuck out on the job and I won't be home till late tonight and, and I'm just going to be exhausted. Uh, I hope this helps everybody to see things, put things into a little, little better perspective that, you know, don't always believe that it's going to be right in front of your eyes. You know, uh, the Lord wants you to get into the word. You have to develop your relationship with him. And the only way to do so is by your faith and by his word, because he is the word. So I'm going to close on that note, and I want to say God bless everybody.